We are here in beautiful Las Vegas, and I'm here with Chris Angel, world's most famous magician. And thank you for having me, Chris. Thank you. And you have your own theater right on Las Vegas Boulevard, and it's sold out every night. What's the secret? Well, if I, if I said the secret, then everybody would have a sold out show. <laughs> you know, there is no secret outside of hard work, tenacity, perseverance, passion, never giving up. You know, I, uh, it took me 18 years, Tony, as you know, to become an overnight success. And uh, it's easy to talk about other people's success. But if you want to do it, don't waste your life talking about it. Put the action into motion. Actions speak louder than words. Money doesn't buy creativity. All the money in the world doesn't make a bad idea good. So I would say get out there, perform as much as you can. Celebrate who you are. Be yourself. Don't try to be anyone else. And, um, you know, it's just something you have to want and you have to believe in. And you have to realize that it's going to be one of the hardest challenges to accomplish because I don't think people on the street can name five magicians. So to be the guy um, is uh, a blessing, but it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And to have a show here at Planet Hollywood in the heart of Las Vegas, the entertainment capital world, to have the number one best-selling show out of 500 plus shows in Vegas, took a shitload of work. It took work beyond work since I was six years old to get here. It's not an easy road. It's, it's a very, very difficult road. And I can say this, uh, a dear friend of mine who passed away, his name was Bill Coyne. He managed uh, Kiss, Billy Idol, Billy Squire. I was sitting next to a dump set, dumpster. I was kind of depressed. And he said, what's, what's the matter, Chris? And I said, you know, I put all of my eggs in one basket. This is going back in the 90s. And I don't know if I'm going to succeed. And he said, the journey is far greater than the destination. These are the best days in your career. I couldn't understand what he meant until I became successful. And when you're the most relevant performer out there, it's a lot more difficult to remain there because it takes even more work than when you were trying to make it. 100%, 100%. Yeah. You remember when I used to come to your house? Hey, you were in my, I, you, uh, your house and my house is mm -hmm. about what, two and a half miles, you know, I remember yes, you. Yes, Westbury. I remember, West, I remember you. You know, doves, you always had doves. How, how old were you when you got your first dove? I think I was 14. A lot of things happened when I was 14 years old, but I got uh, a, a bunch of birds and I started incorporating them because I was a big fan of Chan and Pollock and, and obviously Lance Burton, who's a dear friend, such an amazing talent. Saw his FISM act, that was incredible, but I wanted to do it my way. Right. And so I got some birds and I started working. I started performing anywhere I could for free. Birthday parties, recreation centers and I started incorporating the birds and I started to try to think about you know how could I do this in a different way both from a methodology and also from a presentation point of view again trying to celebrate who I was as opposed to trying to be Lance Burton who obviously me and Lance dear friends but you could not be more of the opposite he's the antithesis of me he's actually a nice guy I'm not so nice. No, I'm just teasing. Yeah, yeah. I love the opening of the show. You appear magically with that, but flames and a smoke. It's, it's the most beautiful opening in any magic show I have ever seen. And more than that, you, your show is not just about magic. It's more than magic. It's, it's the, 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 the immersive, is that the word for it? Yeah, it's immersive, but here's the secret. We were talking about secrets before. It's the magic of emotion. It's not how do I do that trick. It's how do you feel when you watch it. It's that connection that I have with the audience. That, when you have that connection with an audience that they can cry or be scared or be excited, that's the purest form of magic. It's not about tricks. It's not about puzzles. And so the opening that you talk about is called materialization. 
I don't want to do anything that other people do. I try to strive to create my own original. Yeah, illusions and, original. and approach to doing a show. So the opening, people won't get this from watching it the first time, but my story in my mind, we're in a theater, and this theater is being taken over by aliens. And if you noticed, all the LED screen starts to shatter and crack. And then when we see the sheet on the table, underneath that table, we see a shadow of an alien. That cloth flies away. You see the, 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 the impossible conditions. Nothing behind, nothing around, lit. You see flames shooting behind. So you know the table is this thin. And the next thing you know, there's a bit of smoke and fire. And when we see the alien projected onto the smoke, which transforms into a human shadow, which is then me. So I am the alien. That's how I do these super natural things in the show. It's I'm not from this world. That's the story that I created in my mind. And that's why the show starts like that. And, and, and there's a section in the show that I feel like I'm in a video game. Yes. This is a section where the phantom. I can tell you a great uh, story yeah, about that. Yeah. The phantom is coming down. Yes, from then, in the audience. He comes down from nowhere. He's just coming down. Right in the audience. And, and then you have a sword fight with him. Yeah, I fight with him, a little and MMA, the and then at the end I, I do a sword fight, and it goes into basically the Matrix. So it's like, you know, 3D without 3D glasses, and the whole scene goes 360 degrees, and then at Amazing. the end, I'm the villain. Amazing. And in the end, you, you vanish him. Yeah. And then you, he, I am you him. become yeah. the Phantom. Yeah. Oh, I, phantom I, I, phantom I, phantom yeah it, I vanish and I become the Phantom. And by the way, I got to give all the credit in the world for that original illusion from my dear friend, Lance Burton. Lance is the one who came up with that. He developed that. He workshopped that. And he performed it. You know, throughout his history, he performed it, you know, at uh, the Monte Carlo right. at the time. He performed it at the Hacienda. Right. And it was such an amazing illusion. And being the classy, wonderful friend that he is, I said, Lance, you know, I'm going to be doing a new show that I'm, I'm creating right now. And I would love to do something with this, but I won't do it like you do it because he calls the character Oscar. <laughs> I'm going to develop it Chris Angel style. So he said, run with it. I said, let me give you some money for the license. He said, no, Chris, I don't want anything. Lance is a He's sweet He's such Lance. a wonderful guy. So I took that illusion and I put it in the context and the theme of a live video game. And so like Mortal Kombat or any of these Fortnite, any of these video games. So what I did was, is I used projection, video, phys physicality, and of the performers and practical effects that seamlessly meld and create this, basically this scene, which is an optical illusion because everything is working in harmony. So the effect of the room spinning and the, and the guy coming down and all of these different things, it's really taking a variety of um, disciplines and bringing them together to create a very unique experience that the world of magic has never ever seen before. 100%, yeah. 100%. And more than that, I mean, you took some of Houdini's things right? and made it greater. If Houdini was here today, you're gonna get a standing ovation from him. When I see you in a straight jacket, all right, and you're, you're upside down, but you're spinning, my God, I'm wondering, how does he, don't you get headache spinning? I've been doing it since I was a teenager. And, I, you know, I, I always saw videos of Houdini and they would just sit there and do this. Right. And I was like, it needs to be much more. My show is a very physical show. If you're not, uh, you're not athletic, you don't work out, you're not in shape, you can't do the show. This show is really a testament to physicality, being in the moment, forward thinking, and really understanding what's happening, because it is dangerous 
you know, you could kill, get killed, you can kill somebody. It is a very, very serious show. So I'm always about physicality because that's what I am in real life. What I do on stage is an extension of who I am. And so um, those illusions and, 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 and the different types of special effects and a type of music I have and a type of lighting I have, you know, is all stuff that is part of like what is in my DNA, what I love, right. what I grew up on, right. which wasn't in the magic world. Right. It was from other disciplines that I then brought into what I wanted to bring to the stage right. in a u unique experience. My show is not a magic show. It's a concert. It's, it's an experience. You know, you'll cry, you'll be scared, you'll be excited, you'll, you'll be in amazement. There's something in this show for everyone and whether you're, you know, uh, seven, eight years old or you're 78 years old, you're going to see stuff that's going to blow your mind. 100%. The another Houdini's beat, which you took it to the next level, and again, if you will see, I, he gives you a standing ovation, the metamorphosis, when, yeah. they, when they lock you up, tie you up into the trunk, and then uh, your assistant is on the top, but the, the, the instant change, I mean, yeah. your way of doing it, Never seen anybody doing it that well. Thank you. Well, going back to the straitjacket, which ties into the metamorphosis, right. because I do that first. I do it over the audience's heads, right over their heads. I come from the stage. I fly over their heads. And then while I do that, here's the story that people don't know. I'm the nucleus of a tornado. And the reason why I spin so much is it brings a storm because you have all the debris, the balloons, the bags, everything is flying around because we have these huge, you know, four to six foot fans that are built into the theater to create this immersive experience for the audience because I don't want the audience to watch the show. I want the audience to be in, in the show. show. Yeah. And so when I get out of that straight jacket, the audience is going crazy. And then I'm hanging upside down and then I'm, I come back over the stage. I get lowered upside down into the trunk. It's locked up. And then we go into the next phase, which is much more of a kind of a little bit like a provocative S&M sexy um, scene because we have the women in it and we have this whole, you know, 50 shades going on, right? And essentially the girl's handcuffing me and she's a horse. It's, it's this bizarre Fellini, Dolly kind of moment that comes to life. But it's spectacular because all the fire and the fact that I'm spinning and this transformation happens in a split second. And I worked on that actually um, thanks to Jonathan Pendragon. Another wonderful person came to see me. We made a trade. He loved my razor blades. I loved this switch because I used to do the metamorphosis without a curtain. It was done in about a second, second I and a half that, with, the, with, the, with the fire. fire. And it was, it was something that in Vegas doing because of the climate and, and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't do it throughout the year. So I went to this latest version, but uh, I also gave uh, Jonathan Pendragon uh, the ability to do my razor blades. So, you know, magic and the community by and large needs that because, right. you know, the, the tide raises all ships. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's David Copperfield or Penn and Teller or whoever it is, when I'm hugely successful, it's going to raise them up too. It helps everyone. And so if we have that personality of sharing information and, and, and not being so like, ah, you know, as Jim Steinmeier said, magicians have been guarding, guarding an empty safe, right? The, all they're doing is protecting secrets. Who gives a shit about the secret? It's not about the it's secret. The performance. It's about how you present it. It's yes. about selling yourself. It's about you yes. being the star, you being yes. the celebrity. 100%. That's why people come to see me. They want to come see Chris Angel. Exactly. They don't want to go see somebody that they don't know. And that's why it's so important if you're a young magician, and I'm talking to you, if you're a young magician and you want to be successful, yes, you got to have chops and you got to have great you know, technique and really good routines and all that. But the more important part is sell yourself. 
make yourself be something that connects to the audience more than the tricks because if the tricks are the only thing that connects to the audience then anyone any nameless face can go there and perform it and the audience will be equally as happy but if they're coming to see you then they want to see you do that trick they don't want to see anybody else it's like seeing a huge celebrity Drake you want to see Drake if you pay to go to see Drake and you bought your tickets you want to see him you don't want to hear tonight the part of Drake will be performed by you know uh, Shannon like yeah, you Joe want Shaw. yeah you want to see Drake, Drake and that's what you want people to desire about you you want people to come see you exactly not 100%. Chris Angel but there was a time where a lot of magicians were very influenced by Ricciardi, mm -hmm. the great magician. The best. The best. And you were influenced by him. Massively. I know. <laughs> so was I. Yeah. You know, so was everybody in the You business. have great footage. Yeah, I do have great footage. footage. I have that footage that, that, and from your DVD of Ricciardi. Yeah, yeah. It's ama amazing footage. Amazing. You know, maybe we should put it on YouTube, people can see it. Yeah. But anyway, on... Um, Ricciardi's decolta chair. Yeah. You took that again. You took that, that trick and took it to the next level where you put the girl on the chair, cover her up, and then you pull the cloth and she's gone. Yeah, but I do it, I do it different than Ricciardi. It's a different method. It's my own concept. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, is. and it took me a while. And then, you know, it gets a little annoying when you have people that, like, that will rip you off. But at the end of the day... I created it, and, and, and I created it because Ricciardi was a master showman. He was. He took the simplest objects, a broom, a chair, a box, and he made it so Into powerful. Magic. And that was because of his presence, the way he moved like a matador. He was really, um, as far as a powerful character, he was the guy that most influenced me. And so the Dakota chair, the razor blades, even the way I do my levitation, the way he would move <laughs> his hands, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he would be like a conductor, a mad conductor. That's all Ricciardi. That was my inspiration. Now, I would never take his trick and do it like he no. did. So what I did is I wanted to do it in a way that didn't rely on what is called as a flip over box. Let's not which give is, away the secret. Well, it's okay. People yeah. don't know what a flip just, over box is to, unless they know. Yeah, but I just want to, for home audience, which they've never seen, yeah. uh, the, 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 the illusion, uh, Chris puts the girl on a chair, covers it, and yanks the cloth. She's instantly gone and instantly appears on a, on a trunk, an empty trunk that's been on the stage all along. So your method is yes, different than and, his. and the method is different, different. Because, because the trunk is shown empty. It never leaves it the never stage. never leaves the stage. And you see the girl's hand because I have two holes in the cloth and she puts it's her hands out. Seconds. So usually you would see it behind the cloth, but here you see her actual physical hands. You know, Tandiana, move your hands. Go. She's there, fire, boom, <laughs> flips out of the box, little acrobatics. But that's, that's the essence of, of what makes people engage and why Mind Freak in Las Vegas and how I was so blessed to have the number one best-selling show in Vegas, not just magic show, show, because we're doing things, we're pushing the envelope. You know, we're never resting on what we did yesterday. We put more effort today into what we're gonna do tomorrow than what we did in the past. Because we, we don't take any audience, Tony, for granted. Every single person, especially in the world that we live with the economy being challenging, they're taking their hard earned money and they're choosing to buy one show, one ticket, because people don't buy multiple shows anymore. They don't have the disposable income. So when they come to see Chris Angel Mind Freak here at Planet Hollywood in the heart of the Las Vegas Strip, I'm gonna do everything in my power, the cast, the crew, everybody's gonna do everything in our power to perform the most spectacular, spectacular. amazing, yeah. mind-blowing, experience that you can have because you know what 
we will never have that same audience in a room together again ever, ever. in the history of the ever. world. Ever. So every audience deserves the very best from us and we try to perform at the highest level and give everything we have in us to the audience. Give them that experience yes. that they can go home. I never say, phone wow, it in. I never walk through it. Show, we never walk show. through it. We got to do it like it's the first time every time because it is for the audience the yeah. first time. Yeah. The other thing that I'm, I like it very much, most people don't know that you've been doing this for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I remember when you were young. Six years you, old. You were walking up the wall and coming down the wall here in the show. You're on uh, this long step ladder. Yeah. And you define gravity. Yeah. You're working down. Mm -hmm. And it, it never fails. The audience are, I mean, standing ovation and clapping hands. It's, I mean, through the show, I see them give you a lot of standing ovation. Yes. But to define the gravity when you're working down those steps. It takes it to another level. It, it's like, then I want to see that. That's why that's the second to last illusion in the show. Yeah. Because people, they, they just lose their mind. They see me standing 18, 20 feet above the stage. They don't know what's going to happen. I'm balancing up there. I could fall, and I have fallen. And then I go perpendicular, walk down toward the stage, and then people go crazy. But then it's not over. We're just beginning. I then float up in the air, float through the ladder. Do you know I posted that video? And in probably four weeks or five weeks, it got 14 million views for a, seven sec for a seven second clip. 14 million, that's... 14 million in, in a couple, few weeks. In two weeks. And uh, it, it, was, it was incredible because people have never seen it. And then people are like, oh, it's CGI, it's trick photography. No, 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 here's the difference. Come to the show. And see I life. do it every night. All the stuff that you see that you might think is done with, yeah, trick camera, photography, yeah. camera trick. No. I do it every night. It's life. And, and, and then people, that's what really dumbfounds. That's why I get five, six standing ovations in a show, because people expect not to see what they saw on television because they don't think it's possible to do live. So then when they see it, they lose their mind, and then they, they stand up immediately because they didn't expect it was possible. You 100%. Know? Now, Chris, you know this. Um, I've been one of your early supporters, and I always been support you in any way I can. And most people probably doesn't even realize that you were 30 years old when you made it. Most people will give up at 35. I was older, actually. Even before. I was older. Really? I was about, when Mind Freak, the television series came out, I probably was about 35, 36. Now, I did... Mind Freak on Broadway and 43rd in this little room which you presented me, Magician of the Year. Magician that was of the, year. the first time I ever got an award, and I thank you so much and for believing really in me. Sales, yes, I was happy for yes it was fantastic. And, um, but that was a little show at the WWE downstairs, 145 seat banquet room that I converted into a makeshift theater. And, um, and that's what I did. And so I started there, and uh, had the name Mind Freak. And then from there, before I had any management, I went out, I hustled, I sold a television um, special that was on uh, ABC Family at the time, which is now called Fox. It was called Mind Freak. Then I sold another special by myself called The Supernat Supernatural, and that was on Sci-Fi. And then I went to Japan and did a uh, two-hour special with Mr. Merrick there on TBS, Tokyo Broadcasting System. But it all started back in 2001. But then in 2004, I signed my deal. 2005, Mind Freak right. came out on A&E. And that just transformed my life. Right. Game over. Right. Because I couldn't go anywhere. The show was playing six, eight hours a week. Um, it was, I was living in a hotel. I had, you know, I had thousands of people that would just, there to watch me shoot the TV show. And it was the most incredible blessing um, yeah. because it really allowed me to have the leverage to then put together a live show in, in Las Vegas 
and, and do all the different things that I always wanted to do, but I didn't have the means to do. So it's all like a ladder, levels, steps. And every level in the way, we present you another Merlin Award. Yes. You got six of them. Yes. And we have a surprise for you tonight. Yes. But I'd like you to tell them, those people especially who are passionate in whatever they do, it doesn't have to be magic, they're passionate, but they keep trying and it doesn't work and they keep trying and they're about to give up. Maybe you can just give them a piece of advice. Yeah, you know, um, here's the truth. If you're young or young at heart, Every moment of life is a gift, and we can never take that for a moment, even though we do, including myself. The most important thing in life are the things you can't buy. Love, health, happiness. And how do you get those things? How do you become happy? You become happy doing what you love, right? And so, yes, you have to make a living at it. And you have to put the effort and the time and the energy into accomplishing that. And it's not going to happen for you. You can't expect somebody to make it happen. You have to rely on yourself. And I would say this, no matter what you want out of life, you have to have a burning desire, a passion that you cannot live without it. Because if you don't, then it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And here's why. It takes action to manifest something that's in your mind. Not just talk, not just like, oh, I wanna do this. You have to live it. You have to breathe it. My passion right now is MMA, mixed martial arts. I trained yesterday four hours. I trained the day before two hours. And I'm training with monsters, people that have won. Frank Mead, a two-time UFC heavyweight champion. <laughs> Jake Ellenberger, my training partner, UFC veteran. Um, he was 15 and 0, like, you know, when, when he was in the UFC. And this guy went through his own trials and tribulations. I want to earn my black belt. I'm a purple belt right now in MMA on the ground, standing up. But it doesn't matter if I want to be a great cook, I want to be a painter, I want to be a doctor. It doesn't matter. You got to immerse yourself in what it is you want to accomplish. And Hang out with people that are successful doing it. Don't try to get paid. Just hang around them. My dad always said to me, Christopher, whatever you want to do in life, hang out with people that are successful doing it. If you hang out with crap, you start to smell like it. Yeah. And I wasn't a smart guy. I, I, was in, I took the short bus to school. I never went to college. You know, I just had the tenacity, the passion, the willingness to do whatever it took with the physical effort to get the smarts, the persistency. It took me 18 years of knocking on doors in New York City. And, 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 and it, 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 it took that long to become an overnight success because it's not one thing. It's a series of small things that happen. Also transforming, being true to yourself, you know, if, if, if you want to do something, it also has to be a realistic goal, right. right? You can't expect to be the greatest guitar player in the world, but you've only played guitar for a year, and you don't, re like, it's got to be realistic. You can't expect to be, you know, a bodybuilder, but you've only, you only lifted weights a few times, or you want to be a supermodel, and you're not in that type of shape. You have to be realistic with what it is you want to accomplish, yeah. And then you got to work harder than anyone else to achieve it. That's my mantra, and that's what I live by, no matter what it is in life. There you got it, guys. The best advice in the world. The man made it. He gave it to you the way it is. The burning desire. You want to wake up every morning with that burning desire. You want to be the best in what you want to do. And persistence. And there's people going to tell you, you know, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Let that fuel you. Let that give you the energy. I loved when magicians used to talk smack about me. It was the worst thing they possibly could do. Because you know what it did? I'm the type of person, I'm very competitive. Second is not an option. I would put their pictures on my mirror. True story. <laughs> I would wake up in the morning and see them. I would go train in the gym harder. I would go train in my magic more. And I overshadowed, overcame all of these people that talk smack about me. 
I don't even know where they are now. All I know all and gone. all I care about is what I have to do. When you want to create a path, you don't spend your life looking over your shoulder. You look ahead because you're the leader. And that's what I try to do. And I try to teach my children that. Doesn't matter what you want in life. First thing is you got to be happy. You have to be happy. You have to have that health to be happy, to, to have that love for what you do, for the people around you. Listen to people. Be honest with yourself. Get people you trust to critique you. Get constructive right. criticism. Go in front of an audience for free. Right. Listen to, an, Siegfried said this to me. He said, the audience will always tell you what's good, what's not good. Listen to the audience. And it's one million percent true. Hundred percent. I even ask the audience if I put something new in. Do you like that? What do you like better, this or that? I'm good. That Thanks. type of person good. that I can get away with whatever I want to because I, I'm people. I'm a loose cannon. You know, <laughs> it, as a performer, you know, they. I'm in the audience. I'm hanging upside down. And people expect this erratic behavior. But I say to them, Look, I'm working on something new. I want your feedback. You're going to help me. And I'm so grateful that you're going to help me. What do you think? And I take that very serious. But I listen to people I trust. Fantastic. Hey, I'm so grateful. Likewise. After all these years, it's been so over 25 years when you came over and we did a little interview together. Yes. We talked about this and you made it happen. You made it happen. We talked about 25 years. You got to manifest. And it all came true. Yeah. And I want you to know I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. So and good. I'm so, so grateful um, to have you uh, believe in me since way back when because. Most people don't, but if you get that person that does, and that family member that does, it fuels you. It gives you the fuel to keep on going, because yes, you believe in yourself, but you know, for me, every one day that I have that's good in my career in the past, I would have 90 days of frustration yeah. and feeling like I failed. Yeah. So when you have that light or that glimmer and that person, that believes in you, it's a godsend. Yeah. We went to a Greek diner over 25 years ago, and I told you about an idea, 24 karat gold Merlin Award. Remember that? I do remember that. I'm going to surprise you tonight after your show. I'm I, 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 I am, I am, uh, is, this, is, is this like, I, I don't even want to ask any, because you've never done that before. No. I'm going to surprise you tonight. Let's leave it at that. But I just want to ask you one question, if I may, and you can cut this out if you wish. All right, this thing that you're planning. What you're getting? No, nobody, nobody, nobody. No one. No, no. What you're getting? I, 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 I don't want to tell, but they're going to see this after. The, okay. They're gonna see, so we can talk about it then. Okay. You're getting the 24 karat 24 goal. Merlin Award. It's called GOAT. The greatest GOAT. It's the greatest of all time. And nobody will never give it to anybody. And you're going to get it tonight. I didn't want to. You see, I wanted to surprise I, you. I, 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 uh, we, we, I, I, I honestly, I, I can just say, I can't even say I'm, I'm honestly speechless because uh, the International Magician Society is the largest magic society in the world. It's in the Guinness, in the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay, and um, to think about how this started when I first met you, yeah. and you gave me my first award, Magician of the Year. Yes, and that was and the one second of, one, Magician of the Year. Yes, you were talking to Lionsgate. Yes, you said, oh, "Will I get the second one?" I says, "Next year," but I give you credit. You said, "Could you give me the letter?" that I'm going to get it, but I'm going to show the lines gate. Yes, you that's true. You get the money from them. That's true, because I did a television special. They put up the money. Two yeah. of them, Mind Freak and, and Supernatural. Yes, yes. And, uh, but, but here's the thing, uh, Mr. Hassini. I give you the credit for that. I, I, um, I sincerely mean this. And I, you got me off guard because I didn't know exactly. You asked to do an interview, but I didn't know this was going on. So I, I just want to say um, thank you 
sincerely from my heart. Thank you so much. You deserve um, it. To you and to all the members for the love, for the support. And, and hopefully I'm a testament to hard work, never giving up, 100%. never being satisfied with what I did yesterday, but always wanting to be better tomorrow. 100%. And I... I, I, um, I'm just so grateful and I, I just, um, I'm getting emotional, but I just, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will work my ass off to always live up to that as long as I'm performing. So there you have it, the GOAT. GOAT. Wow. The greatest of all time. Gold bars will be melted to create the world's most expensive trophy. For the first time ever, the International Magician Society will be presenting to Chris Angel. Greatest of all time, Chris Angel. <laughs> 57,000 members are the greatest. Thank you so yes. much. Yes, yes. And you. you deserve it. And we're going to take, you know what we're going to do? This is what I want to do. Because I want to share this with everyone that has a dream in life. Okay. I want to take this 24 carat gold, gold which we're going to have to like now come up with something that it can't be stolen. And we're going to put it in the lobby. And we're going to put it in a lobby with an explanation of what it means and who it's from, so that everybody that has a dream can see that dreams do come, come true, true if you put the effort into working every moment of every day to live that dream. And by the way, that dream will never happen when you want it to happen. It happens when it's meant to happen. Exactly. And today, it's happening for me. Your dad, man, look at yeah. you. Your dad. My dad is, uh, you know, I'm 56 years old now. Your dad. My dad that. died when he was 60 years old from stomach cancer in my hands in New York. I know, on Long I Island. know. And, um, wow, I, 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 my dad is here. My dad is going to experience yes. this. And, uh, and I guess that yes. we're going to do this on stage or something? After the show. Oh, amazing. After the show. Amazing. And if you want, we have a video making the award. I'll give you a video and you can I want, do something I, okay, yeah, Well, we'll definitely feature it in the lobby. We're going to make something really yeah. special because this is the GOAT. This is, this, goat. Is, <laughs> this is not Magician of the Year, which I'm grateful for and gotten, I think, a bunch of times. The greatest of all time. But that's, that's something that, God, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I and appreciate you and thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for being my friend. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.